Hi, I'm Tim. This will be a short tutorial on um, on creating a fully rigged model in Blender without um, traditional modeling techniques using the skin modify and then rigging it nicely using Rigify. So what we're going to do here today is um, delete the cube at, in Blender, you know, the original cube. Go to, um, first you have to enable Rigify in the in the systems preferences so you go to file systems preferences add-ons search rigging and then find um, rigify now go shift a and add the humanoid meta biped I'm not sure what it's called once that is done add a um, add a plane and delete all but one vertice now move that last vertice to the very center of the uh, the rig um, and it's basically the top end of the bottom spine bone that you want to add this root vertice. Now um, make sure it's in the center there because we're going to add a mirror modifier for um, you know for purposes later. Once this is done, we're adding the mirror modifier, and now we're adding the skin modifier both under the modifier panel. Now I press Control A to scale down the the radius and I extrude it to the legs. Keep extruding it down and um, once again Control A to scale it in so it has some shape, it's not just square. Extrude it along the bones for the feet it's going to end up looking pretty much like a boot. Once again, these models won't be perfect or realistic or anything, but there's still something to animate with that you can create yourself. Uh, now, pressing, of course, if you don't know, 1 for front view, which is that, and then 3 for um, on the number pad, 3 for side view, holding down middle mouse button to orbit around. Now I'm extruding up the spine, making sure that one's in the very center because it's mirrored, don't move across, otherwise there'll be two separate things. Now I'm extruding along the arms. We'll, um, we'll go into top view soon and just make sure, because things are in three dimensions, it's not 2D, we have to make sure it fits it in the, um, in the Y aspect as well as X and Z. Now extruding up the neck, control A again to scale the little extrudes. Benefit of the skin modifier is that it does it's kinda like the um the metoids or whatever they're called, the uh surfaces that kinda gloop together like a liquid. It has um it uh, connects itself, which is great. Now soon we're gonna start doing the hard part which is the the hand and um, creating all the fingers and everything along the bones of the Rigify rig. So extruding along and scaling it down for the main knuckles of each five fingers. Of course the pinky is going to be slightly smaller and the, um, the thumb is going to be offset a little bit. But it's quite easy if you just follow the rig that's already there. Now as we're doing this, control A once again to scale each little finger. Don't forget that when you're in top view, see I just pressed control alt Q to split the view up into four parts, so now I can see front and top at the same time. Don't forget in top view, it's not giving a Z depth, it's not going down. So now that I'm in front view, I can move every little bone part down so it fits the fits the rig. So I'm just extruding each little finger down, doing the thumb, so it fits it nicely. In the end, this rig will probably, will, this uh, this character following the Rigify rig will probably look a bit odd, just because of what I've done. Um, in that, it'll have long, thin arms, long legs, and like. I don't know, it'll probably make him fat around the stomach or something, just to give him a bit of character. And then he'll have long, thin fingers. 
You can either leave the Rigify rig the way it is and then just make the fingers thicker or you can change the rig to whichever way you want. You can have some really short legs and massive big bulky arms and then once you've got your rig to the way you want it, the skeleton, you can um, then do the skin modifier like we're doing here and it, make it fit that skeleton and you'll have a, a unique character, something different than the normal Rigify rig. So just doing each little finger, making sure that the little tips are scaled nicely. The great thing about this, um, the great thing about the skin modifier is that it, at the moment there's no option to change uh, the resolution that it extrudes to per little unit, but it's quite, um, as you can see in the fingers there, it's quite detailed. And so um, now we're making sure the, uh, the rig's fitting and we're applying a subsurface modifier which basically smooths out everything because uh, the skin modifier is quite uh, rough, you know, boxes, whatever. Now we have um, scaling up things to make him look more humanistic. Uh, and scaling up his feet, I'm going to subdivide the shin there so that way we can um, scale that down so his legs not so thick and uh, you can see some difference in the, the larger boot and then the thinner leg. This guy, I guess, I don't know, if you texture him, will look like a um, a farmer or something in overalls if you want, or you can edit the mesh later, traditionally, and change it. Uh, so now we are just moving around bones, making the wrist fit a bit better there. And um, As you can see, the fingers weren't correctly placed, so I'm editing them a bit to uh, move them down onto the bones. What you want is the mesh close to the uh, the armatures, which are the bones, the skeleton. I'm rescaling some knuckles there to make them a little bit less thin. This guy will probably look pretty scary in there because he's got long, slender fingers and. Um, and he's tall with no face or no head. Uh, so now I'm just going to duplicate the mesh with all the armatures applied and move it to another layer. So it's kind of like a backup, just in case I want to come back. Now I I applied all the all the modifiers, so everything's now it's just a basic mesh, except for the subsurface. And I moved the armature to the right. Now I hit generate. This is important. Generate, and it generates this lovely bone setup around. The guy. Okay, now I'm going to pose mode. I'm selecting all of it and I'm going, should be under, yeah, hide and I'm hiding that. Now I'm going in the layer on the right and I'm selecting the third one from the right. I'm going back, selecting the mesh and automatic parenting the mesh to the bones. I'm deselecting the layer and then unhiding all. This is pretty almost done. Now if you see me move the bones around, Rigify has done a fantastic job in uh, see scaling S to scale that the fingers will curl in and out nicely, move around the uh, the legs there all deforming nicely. Automatic weighting really did work quite well with this because you followed the armatures. Um, now see I moved the slider and IK is enabled. I'm hiding the second bone there. I'm going back to the other one, enabling the IK by the slider in the end menu. You can rotate that little back thing and uh, that'll work. Move around the thing so the legs are basically parented to the controller. Hiding another one, enabling it, um, yeah, doing the slider so now it follows the hand. If you move it around, see, it all uh, follows nicely. I'm hiding these bones that don't move with the arm. I'm not quite sure why, it just seems to work out that well, that way. 
Uh, now you can see me moving around the bones. And it seems to be rigged pretty damn well using Rigify. It's uh, pretty much all set. Now uh, Alt R and Alt G to move everything back to its pose mode. I'm just going to quickly pose it into like a running movement. Uh, and then you're pretty much done. So that's uh, pretty much a fully rigged character with nice hands, no face, no facial rig, but like a just an overall body biped rig that fits it nicely without doing any box modeling whatsoever, just using the skin modifier. So it's very quick. This whole thing took me, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes max to make this fully articulated character. And we're done. So I hope you enjoyed.